Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Neto or my Philippine. What's that? Oh. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Neto from my Philippine dreams. Good morning. It's 7:30 in the morning. It's just me, you, and the roosters in the background, as always. A short while ago, I had done a video asking people's experiences with DC inverters hooked up to car to turn your car into a generator. And the responses I got were basically of two sorts. The first sort was, Ned, buckle up and get a generator. The other one was, Ned, buckle up and get a solar array. Now, I didn't want to get a generator because they're too loud. We actually have a neighbor two houses down from us. He's got a Honda, and Hondas are pretty quiet. And when the generator is going, you can hear it in the background if you're doing a conference call, if you're on a microphone or whatnot. There's also the gas. You can't keep the gas in it. You have to change the gas regularly. There's the maintenance on a generator. I just didn't want to deal with the generator. As for a solar array, they're still pretty expensive. Uh, the batteries are also an issue. Here in the tropics, the batteries do not last that long. We had a solar array down in a house in Darwin, and the batteries were pretty much dead. The heat, the humidity, just doesn't make solar that practical. Okay, now the reason I wanted an emergency generator system of some sort is we have a UPS. The UPS is hooked up to the modem, the router, the laptops we have, the, our T440Ss, and, and they last around 12 hours, so that's not an issue. But we needed something when the UPS basically goes out after about 30, 40 minutes, and we needed something to go beyond that. And basically what we were looking for was emergency power source in case there's like a natural disaster, some sort of catastrophe, an act of God. Basically to power a laptop, to charge up phones, to run a fan, the router, modem, that sort of thing. One of the guys who messaged me through the website actually is a Redditor also, and he sent me a thread to his Reddit, and he recommended a certain brand that he had gotten on Lazada. And he said he was convinced that it was a pure sign inverter. And we'll talk about pure sign versus modified sign in a little bit. So I did a little more research on it. It cost about $110 on Lazada, and I finally took the plunge. And this right here is the model that I ended up getting. You can find this on Lazada. I'll put a link down in the video description box. It says it's a pure sign. It's rated for 3,000 watts continuous, 6,000 watt surge. I'm not sure for $110 that you can actually have that type of capacity, but all will be found out in the testing. It also came with, of course, the cables for attaching to your battery terminals. I am probably going to get heavier cables because the AWG on these is pretty thin. And I also picked up, and I think I got this on Shopee. This is a Showa. Showa retractable extension cord. I think it's about 25 meters, so that's pretty long. And it's also got the terminals in the front. So you hook up the inverter to the car, you run the line into the house, and you got your outlets here. This cost about $25 on Shopee. Okay, so there's two types of inverters that you can get. The long and short of it is you want pure sign over modified sign. The pure sign is the nice one that goes up and down. The modified is more of a step and some devices have a hard time working with modified sine waves, specifically variable speed tools such as drills, microwaves, anything with an induction motor has a hard time with modified sine. And you've got to be careful when you're shopping, because on Lazada, a lot of times it'll say in the article heading, it'll say that it's pure sine, but then you scroll down a bit and it'll say either modified wave or hybrid wave. The advantages of modified is they're a lot cheaper. It's at least half the price. The disadvantages, as you can see on YouTube, is a lot of the cheap Chinese modified wave ones tend to blow up quite a bit. There's a few things you can do in order to tell if the unit that you received is indeed a pure sign. One of the things you can do is hook up a variable speed drill. Also, sometimes with fan motors, you'll hear a buzzing noise, and they typically won't be able to run a microwave. But enough of me yapping, how did it all work out? Let's get to the testing on a fan, a variable speed drill, and my air conditioner, because why not? What could possibly go wrong? All right, boys and girls, so we have the truck started up. That's all the noise in the background. Diesel engine, CRDI 16 valve. And we're just gonna take a quick temperature of the inverter. It is 88 degrees, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna we got it all plugged in. we got a big battery on here too. It's a big moto light. And this has a pretty strong alternator. We're just going to be testing the fan and then we might try testing the aircon. Alright, so right now it's showing 
output is uh, actually the input into the inverter is 13.8 volts. It's a little high, hey. And the AC voltage coming off of it is 227. The fault light is on, but it's supposed to be on and stay on. If the fault light goes off, that's when you have a problem. So we're gonna plug it in now and uh, check out the fan. Hopefully it'll work. I got it plugged in. All right, we plugged it into our extension cord that we got off Shoppy. Now we're gonna follow it back into the house and fire up the fan. Then we might try out the air conditioner. Why the hell not, right? What do you think, Rich? What do you think? Huh? Yeah. All right, so we got it all plugged in. Cat's coming over to inspect. God, you're getting big. Let's try out the Hanabishi. I'm holding my face away. Here we go. Yeah. Now, since I don't have an oscilloscope, and this claims to be a pure sign, one of the ways you can tell is if the motor is surging. And it's not, it's going strong. So that's good. That's about 65 watts on that speed setting. And we got our Showa. And since this works, I think I might just plug it into the air conditioner and see what happens. But first, let's go check out the inverter, see if anything weird's happening. No, everything looks normal here. 13.8 going in from the battery and 220 volts coming out. Perfect 220 volts. Now what I want to do at some point is get some heavier due to cables for this, probably uh, some jump, jumper cables, and put a weatherproof housing on this or semi-weatherproof housing and hang it from this hook right here or figure out something else. If anybody else has any ideas of how to like weatherproof this thing, that'd be cool. Screw it, let's go hook up the air con. Okay, so we got it hooked up. The DC inverter, one horsepower Boston Bay, it's a media. We'll see what happens. We're gonna go straight to Econ. Let's hope this works. Okay, we're in eco mode. And it's working. Now the thing is, let's go check out the inverter. Huh, okay. All right, so we got the the input voltage is changing around between 12, 9, 13. Uh, output voltage is still 225. Uh, we're gonna let the, I'm gonna let this run for about a half hour with the aircon on and see if it does okay and see what the, also what the temperature of the inverter is after that 30 minutes. All right, dreamers, so after 30 minutes with the aircon on, on eco mode, which draws about 300 watts, it's at 13.7 DC. The input's good. AC is 229. Uh, let's get some temperatures. All right, the chassis. The chassis is about 91 degrees Fahrenheit. The inverter is about 95 degrees. It's not bad. That's 99 degrees. That's a little high. 100 degrees. And that's 113 degrees. 114 degrees. That's hot. 110. Alright, so we're going to turn this bad boy off. Hold on, I gotta go turn off the aircon first. All right, so aircon is off. It's still at 13.7, 228 output, and we're just gonna turn it off. It's done its duty. And uh, yeah, not bad. The only concerns I have is the temperature on, that's 106. That's 100, so. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to run my aircon on this. This is emergency backup power for uh, the modem, the router, laptop, and two fans. This is 3,000, it's supposed to be 3,000 watts steady and 6,000 watts surge. It's Chinese, so who knows? But experiment, I think, uh, went along pretty well. 
Nothing smoked, nothing blew up. No warning lights came on. And the RPM on the Tucson did not increase. All right, one way you can test for to see if it's a pure sine wave is to grab yourself a variable speed drill. Oh, I got my trusty homolite. Oh, by the way, the truck's off. Battery's showing about 12.3, 227. And if, if it's a pure sine wave, you're going to be able to do variable speeds. If it's a modified sine wave, it's only going to be able to do off and on. So let's try it out, okay? Let's slow. About half. And it's full. All right, so yeah, we're looking at it. Looks like it's a pure sign. I'm no expert. I am no expert on these matters. But um, I also tested it on the microwave. This is with the car running. I tested it with a microwave, tested it on the fan to see if it buzzed, also tested it on the air conditioner, which has a pretty big uh, conduction motor of its own, and it looks like it's pure sign. I don't know. Again, this is just going to be used for like emergency. It's not going to be used for the air conditioning. It's going to be used to get fans going, modem router, charge phones, charge laptops, charge my rooster killer stuff like that so yeah yeah who knows okay so in summation it seems to be working out pretty well I'm not completely convinced that it's a pure sign and or that it's that it's rated for 3,000 watts or up to 6,000 watt surge the testing leads me to think that it is a pure sign or at least a really good modified wave because none of the things that I tested it on had any issues running it also, the temperatures on the inverter and the cables themselves were pretty good from what I've read. And it looks like this one won't turn into a misadventure, hopefully. So again, look out for the false advertisements. Make sure it's absolutely pure sign. There's, with Lazada, you have a good return policy. The first one I got, I actually bought one before. It was a 2,000 watt. It wasn't pure sign because it, it couldn't start the microwave. And the drill would also either be completely on or completely off. There was no variable speed with it. So I returned it and Lazada gave me my refund. Make sure you're getting a 12 volt to 220 volt because that's what you need here in the Philippines. You'll see some for 24 volts input, some for 48 volts. Those are for people that have solar arrays. And that's not, if you just have a car and you're running off one battery, you're not gonna want that. And right now, I think I'm pretty good. I mean, if there's an emergency, if the power goes out, we've been having some extended brownouts surprise ones usually they're only like 10 to 15 minutes but lately we've been having them four or five hours so that's a problem and if there's any like acts of god natural catastrophes we have a source of power is it as efficient and effective as a dedicated generator probably not but again i don't want to deal with the maintenance changing the gas all the time and the noise of a dedicated generator and at this point the batteries just aren't there. Once the battery technology is good, and it looks like, I guess the Chinese and the Brits have come out with a million mile battery for electronic vehicles. So we'll see how this pans out and what applications it can have for solar arrays in your house. All right, so there's some peace of mind there. Until next time, this is Ned over my Philippine dreams. Take care, puppies, rainbows, and unicorns for all. Peace. Oh. And be sure to put your experiences or anything that you might have seen during the testing, like the high voltage on the input, that 13.7 volts coming in. If you have any comments or any input on that, I'd appreciate it. Leave it down in the comments section. Thanks. Hey, if you consider our work to be of any value, consider supporting us on Patreon. If you're a Patreon, you get a free copy of my ebook, and we do monthly Google Hangouts. So consider doing that, if you would, please.